So this is uh, Integrated One D-Day Unit One. Just running through the prompts to make sure everyone understands them. So on these function machines, on this first one, we're going to substitute in negative four into this equation for the x. Okay. So what this f of negative four is saying is they want us to find the output when our input is negative four. So I'm going to grab a color. Okay. And um, I'm going to substitute it in to this equation for my x. So I'm going to go three times negative four minus four, which is negative 12 minus four. And a negative 12 minus four is a negative 16. So f of negative four is negative 16. When I put in a negative four, I get out a negative 16. On letter B, I'm going to take this 4 and I'm going to input this 4 right here underneath the square root. So it's going to be the square root of 4. Okay, so again, F of 4 is asking us to find the output when we put in or our input is a 4. So I'm putting it into this equation right here for X. So I am going to have the square root of 4 over 10. And the square root of 4 is a 2. 2 over 10. And we can reduce 2 over 10 to a 1 over 5. And so when I put in a 4, my output is a 1 fifth. So f of 4 is equal to 1 fifth. Now on C, we're putting a 2 in for our input. It's going to go right here for my x, so we want to find f of two. So I'm going to go three times two squared. And you have to be careful to understand the difference between what they gave us, which is three x squared, and what I'm going to write in blue. Three x, the quantity being squared. These are different. So the one in blue is saying take three times two, which gives us a six, and then square six and get a 36. That's not what we're doing here. We're doing the pink one. So this two here is only affecting the X. We're squaring the X, not the three. So the way I wrote it here, three times two squared, I need to do the two squared first. So I am going to get, three times four, and three times four is 12. So our answer is 12. F of two is 12. So again, this three X squared, the X is being squared, and then it's times in with three. If we were to take the three times two, they would have written it like this, where the three X is in the quantity being squared. So this one here is a no, we're not doing that, okay? So let me erase that. Okay, so just understand the difference between those two. Okay, on letter D, <clears throat> we don't know the input. We want to find the input. What do we put in for X to get out an eight? So our F of X is eight. So in place of this F of X, I'm going to write eight. So this is going to be eight equal three X minus two. So I want to figure out what x has to be to make 3x minus 1 equal 8. Okay, so I'm going to solve this equation. We don't guess and check. I add 1. I add 1 because to undo something, I have to do the opposite. I have to do the both sides of the equation. So I get 9 is equal to 3x. I divide by 3. And I get x is equal to 3. That's my answer. So what does that mean? f of 3 gave me 8. Okay. So again, what did they want us to find? This 3. x equal 3. They want us to find the input. Okay. On number 2, they gave us two separate functions, function a and function b. 
So what I'm going to do, you don't have to do this. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to write the two functions. I'm going to say, so we have a, which is um, 3x here. Let me do it like this. I'll just write it. Um, so 3x minus 2, that, that is our a. And I'm just going to highlight this. I'm going to fill it. OK. That's A. Then I've got my B. I'm going to make another one. And this is X squared. So X shift and six X squared arrow out of my exponent minus one. And I'm going to make this a different color. Let's say I make it green. OK, so I've got this one here, which is A and this one here is B. Um, I'm going to copy both of them. OK, so I'm going to, to copy and I'm going to come here to select, come down to annotate, select annotations. I click on it. I'm going to copy paste. So the reason I'm going to do this is I'm going to try the order where I do A first and then B. And then I might try going the other direction where I do um, B first. So let me copy B and then A. Okay. So what they want us to do in this is they want us to have an input of two. And we want a final output of 15. And we're going to put it into one machine and then the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try A first and then B. If that doesn't work, I'm going to try B first and then A. So we'll see what works. So I need to put in a 2 into the first one. So I'm going to go 3 times 2 minus 2, which is 6 minus 2 or Four. So now I'm taking four, and that's what's going to go into this. So I'm going to have four squared minus one, which is 16 minus one or 15. So that was actually the right order. If it wasn't, I would then have tried um, two in here. Okay, and let me just do that to show you. So if I had, again, here, let me just show we were putting a two into this equation. So let's say I was putting a two into this one. I would have had two squared minus one, which is four minus one or three. Then three would have come in here and that would have been three times three minus two, which is nine minus two or seven. And that would have been my output. So again, we wanted our final output to be a 15. <clears throat> so the one I did in pink is going to be the answer. So we are going to do A first and then B. I want to see work. <clears throat> and you didn't have to work both of them out because in my case, the first one I chose worked. But I want you to understand that if you didn't get it the first time, trying A first and then B, that's fine. Then try B and then A. That's all you would do. Okay. On number three. Determine if it's re each uh, relationship is a function or not a function. Explain why or why not. So remember that a function, <clears throat> for a function, each x has only one y. So each x, and I'll put in parentheses, input, goes to only one y or output. A particular x can't go to two different outputs. Okay. So first thing I do if it's a table, I'm just going to grab a highlighter. Okay. I scan my x's. And if none of these x's were repeated, there would be no issue because there would be no situation where the same x went to two y's if I didn't have any repeat. I do have a repeat. I have two here. Okay. So I have two here and I have two here. Now notice here, two goes to one, but then all of a sudden two goes to three. That is a problem, okay? So is this a function? No. And why is it not a function? I'm gonna type it. So not a function because the input of two 
goes to two different y's. One and three, that's the problem, okay? That is our problem. So this is not a function. Now on B, I'm gonna scan and see, hey, do I have a situation where my um, X's, and let me get a highlighter. I have any repeat X's. And let's see, I have a two, a four, a six, I have a two twice, so let's see. I've got a two going to four, and I have two going to four. That's okay. Let me just grab a different highlighter. I have four going to four, and four going to four. That's okay. So here, I have two twice, but each time it goes to four. I have four twice, but each time it goes to four. And it's not a problem that every one of these went to the same output, that's okay. I just can't have one output, like this two going to two different numbers. So I can't have it going to four, and then over here going to a totally different number. So is this a function? Yes, okay. So for this, um, each, Input has only one output that it goes to. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to raise this up a little bit. So I'm going to say that even though, even though um, two and four are listed twice in our X column, they both went to the same Y each time. And I don't mean that two and four both have to go the same one, but two and two again has to go the same and four and four again has to go the same. On letter C, we're going to do a vertical line test. And the reason we do a vertical line test is because, so um, for this next one, when it's a graph, we're gonna do the vertical line test. So I'm just gonna grab a vertical line. I'm going to make it a little more transparent so I can see through it. Okay. So let's say maybe I pick this. I'm going to pick this blue. Okay. And to draw a vertical line, I'm going to hold shift and then just go down. So there's my vertical line. And let me kind of zoom in so we can see this a little better. And then I'm just going to come over here and I can just do it with this or I can do it with this. Here, I'll do it with the hand one just so we can kind of see where I'm moving. Okay. So as I'm moving it, across the graph. So for example, if I have it right here, I'm checking negative two when X is negative two. And when X is negative two, it crosses at one spot. So that particular X negative two had only one output, which was um, two, okay? So as I grab this and I move it again, and, I, and every time I'm moving it, each of these are different X's. Okay, and everywhere I move, if it only touches this vertical line, the graph at one spot, it is a function. So this is a function by the vertical line test because everywhere that this vertical line goes, it touches the graph at one spot. And what does that mean? Each different X value. So for example, here at one, we have one Y value. Okay, and again, as I move this at here, I have one y value for this x value. So is this a function? Yes. And explanation? So this is a function by the vertical line test 
everywhere the vertical line moves, the um, graph crosses the vertical line at only one point. Okay. Um, this means that each X has only one Y value. Okay. Okay. So next problem. So on this one, we're looking for domain and range. Okay. Now for domain and range, what I'm going to do is I am going to again, draw a line. Um, I'm going to draw a horizontal and vertical line. So let me just get one of each. Okay. So as I move my vertical line across it for domain, across this graph, so let me zoom in. So as I move this vertical line across the graph, I want to figure out for my X is what's the furthest to the left that this graph goes. So there's no graph right here. There's graph here at negative two. It touches at negative two. And there's graph, 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 graph. Continue having graph. Last place I have graph is here at three. So I'm gonna go from negative two to three. Okay, so the way I'm going to write that is I am going to do a square bracket and it's gonna be negative two to three. Close my square bracket and there we go. That is my domain, okay? Now my range are my y's. And so I am going to be going up and down. So I'm gonna be looking up and down. So as I'm moving up and down this graph, the lowest this graph goes in terms of y is negative three, okay? Because I have a point right here at negative three. And as I move this up, there's graph, 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 graph. The highest this graph goes is here at three. So it's gonna go from negative three to three, okay? So for this one, I'm actually gonna copy this because it's almost the same. So I'm gonna copy, copy, paste. I'm gonna put this here, move this one up a little. So if I wanna get here, let's see. Actually, it's letting, letting me move in, but sometimes you have to click on the equation depending on what you're in. So it's negative three to three. Oops, let me just get rid of my other one. Hold on, let me copy paste. Okay, that one was that. Let me get into my equation. So this one is negative three to three, okay? So again, domain is my X's. And so it's like, I'm taking this vertical line here and I'm going across my graph, okay? And my range are my Y's which is this horizontal line, I'm going from the high to the low, okay? Now evaluate F of negative two. So I wanna to go to where negative two is on the X. So if I move this line to negative two, this is where, this is everywhere my X is negative two, up and down this line. And you see that it crosses right here at this point, which is negative two comma one. So I know my input is negative two, I want my output. And my output is, one. So I am going to write one. Now for um, two, I'm going to move this graph of this line over to two. Okay. So this vertical line is showing everywhere where my X is two. And where does that touch the, the graph? Right here at negative one. So when my X is two, my output, my Y is negative one. So then here, f of two is negative one. Now on this one, when it says um, f of x equal negative three, we want to find our input. We want to know what x is. Okay, I know my output is negative three. So since I know my output is negative three, 
um, let me just move this off. We're looking at this and I want to see where is my y is negative three. Okay, so right here, this is where my y is negative three, right here. So what x value does that correspond with? Three, three comma negative three. So when my input is three, my output was negative three. So we know the input output is negative three. We want the input, the input is three. So my answer is x equal three. Um, on number seven, this is dealing with laws of exponents. And this negative two to the power of five, we are just evaluating. And what this is, I'm just gonna type this out. So um, I just get, uh, well, let me start typing first. So this is negative two. Let's try to get some color here. Okay, negative two. And if I hit, if I'm in the equation type, and I hit shift and eight, I get the dot. Negative two times negative two. I have basically five of these, okay? And so I got one, need one more. Okay, so negative two to the fifth is negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two. We got one, two, three, four, five. So when I take a negative two times a negative two, I get a four. Times that by negative two, I get a negative eight. A negative eight times a negative two is a 16. A 16 times a negative two is negative 32. So my final answer to this is this is equal to a negative 32. So on a problem like this, they want you to actually work it out and give the answer, okay? Now on a problem like this, if I, I'm just gonna kind of color code here, okay? Let me just grab a highlighter. So um, I make sure that there's no exponent outside my parentheses. That's going to change things inside. So there's no exponent out here. There's no exponent out here. So what's happening here is my five and my three are going to be multiplying. Those are normal numbers. Okay. My x to the second is going to multiply with x to the fourth. My y to the third is going to multiply with y to the seventh. Okay. So if I'm color coding this, I'm going to basically have, oops, Try it again. I'm going to have five times three, and then I'm going to have x to the second times x to the fourth, and then I'm going to have y to the third times y to the seventh. So here, when I'm doing this, okay, these are normal multiplication. So five times three is 15. When I'm dealing with my x's here, okay, and I have x to the second times x to the fourth, I add my exponents, okay? So I have two x's here multiplying with four x's here. I'm going to have a total of six x's. So when you're multiplying the bases and the bases have to be the same, you add your exponents, okay? Now over here, when I have y to the third times y to the seventh, I'm gonna do the same thing, okay? I'm going to add the exponents. So three and seven makes a 10, and that's gonna be your final answer. 15 x to the sixth, y to the 10. On one like number, let, letter C, what I'm gonna do is again, my 40 and my four, this is just normal 40 divided by four. And 40 divided by four is 10. And then for my x's, I'm gonna have x to the eighth divided by x to the seventh. So I can cancel out x's from top and bottom. The most I can take is seven from the top and bottom. When I take seven from the top and bottom, I'm left with one on the top. So I'm going to have X. Now, when I'm dealing with my Y's, I have a Y and I have a Y to the four. So I have one Y on top, four Y's on bottom. So I can, I can cancel one on top, one on bottom, and I'm gonna be left with three on the bottom. And so this is gonna be Y to the third. And that's your answer. 
and hopefully that will help you guys to get ready for our test, which is going to be on block number one.